Welcome back to Ducoscopy TV. I'm Monica Gibson and today I'm joined in the studio by Aidan Mankelow from the Economist Corporate Network to take a look at the political and economical situation in Russia. Aidan, thank you for coming in. Now, first of all, there's been a divergence between oil, stock, sorry, oil prices and also stocks in Russia. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit more about this and why this has been the case, do you think? Yeah, it's interesting. This is something that started in the last few weeks, really. I mean, traditionally, the, the stock market and the, and the oil price in Russia have always very much moved in tandem. But what, what we've seen in the last few weeks is there has been starting to be a bit of a divergence. Um, if you look at uh, the oil price, so um, Brent's now back up to above $115 a barrel uh, from below 90 uh, as recently as the middle of June, so it's gone up about 30% in that time. Um, at the same time, the, the, the RTS um, is just up by just 13% uh, in that period. So there's this little bit of a divergence appearing. I think it's partly down to the fact that just uh, generally risk aversion globally is quite high at the moment. So there are concerns, I think the, uh, a sense that the rise in the oil price is more down to uh, geopolitical issues, uh, worries about so what's happening in South Sudan, the potential for the situation in Syria to spill over into northern Iraq. So, th because it's not really being driven by demand fundamentals, there are concerns that the price could slide again quite quickly. Um, the other sort of interesting factor is that, that maybe that there's a bit of a sort of Putin discount starting to appear in the, uh, in the Russian market. So, uh, we've seen a bit of a softness in Russian stocks ever since he announced his decision to return as president last November. Um, so I think those two factors probably explain this, this recent trend. So how would you say the Russian economy is holding up at present, Aidan? It's actually holding up pretty well, especially if you consider the weakness of the global economy elsewhere. So uh, GDP growth slowed to like 4% in the second quarter from 4.9% in the first quarter. But in terms of the sort of underlying dynamics, actually not, not that much has changed and the economy is still you know, powering on fairly robustly which is mainly down to the strength of consumer demand. So private consumption is really growing quite strongly in Russia at the moment. You've got um, credit growth uh, expanding, it's like over 40% at the moment. Uh, real wages are rising by over 10% year on year. Uh, unemployment's back down to where it was before the crisis, before the last uh, crisis in 2008, 2009. So that strength of private consumption is really sort of keeping the Russian economy chugging along quite nicely at the moment. Okay, so do you think, although there, um, however, there might be a risk of an imminent slowdown, perhaps? You can't really see it much in the data at the moment. Um, I mean, domestically, the big worry would be inflation, which um, they had quite a, a, quite a poor grain harvest. And partly because of that, inflation rose to 5.6% in July from a, as low as 3.6% uh, as recently as May. And I think um, as that continues in the second half of the year, you'll see that starting to weigh on real, real, real wage growth a bit and dampen uh, private consumption, especially if, as seems possible, you get some tightening of, uh, of monetary policy. Um, and then obviously there's, there's the weakness of the uh, external environment. So with those, with those two factors, I think probably you'd, you'd see uh, growth in Russia slowing to something like 3.8%, we think, for the, for the year as a whole. Now, on the sort of political side as well, Russia became the 156th member to join the WTO this week. Some have said, you mentioned Putin earlier on as well, mm. um, some have said that this will enable him to have a greater sway over international economic dealings. Do you agree with this? I mean, if you look at Russia's uh, influence in international affairs, it's mainly down to its uh, status as a major oil and gas producer. Uh, also, to some extent, the fact it's still a significant military power. Um, and WTO accession doesn't really doesn't change either of those two things. I mean, what it does, I think, is that Russia was the last major economy outside the WTO. It had been pursuing membership negotiations for something like 18 years. I think the fact that it's finally joined and Russia is now a member of that club maybe gives Putin a little bit more kind of credibility uh, speaking in certain circles. Now, this isn't the only political hotspot in Russia at the moment. What do you think the Pussy Riot verdict tells us about the political risk in Russia at present? Um, it, you wouldn't know it from all the from all the international outcry, but I mean, actually, the support for what Pussy Riot did is extremely low in Russia. It's uh, in something like single digits. I mean, it is still a very conservative country, um, which has made it a bit difficult for the opposition to know how to react and how strongly to support the case. I mean, certainly the verdict shows that the Kremlin is not prepared to show much in the way of leniency 
towards the towards the liberal opposition. The fact that um, Pussy Wright was prepared to um, you know put on this kind of this kind of um, show of defiance um, suggests that, as we've seen from you know the protests and, and other events, that Putin's aura has faded uh, somewhat. So, although you've got um, political stability in Russia still, it's more brittle than it used to be. Uh, I think that's what's really changed. Um, so you can't now rule out were you to see um, the, the economy under underperform in particular. You, you can't really rule out anymore a kind of a Middle East style scenario in Russia in the way that you maybe would have done previously. Aidan, it's been very interesting talking to you today. Thank you for your insights. Thank you. Thank you. Now that's all we have time for at the moment, but click back to Dukoscopy for the latest press reviews and exclusive interviews. For now though, goodbye. <laughs>